everybody, today I'm going to show you an activity to do with pegs. It's excellent for strengthening little fine motor skills for writing, um, the pincer grip. It's, this is great for matching colours. All I've done is, is drawn a dinosaur, laminated it. You can use any picture on a piece of cardboard, on a stiff card, or laminated. And then I put some stickers for them to match the colours. Um, and if you don't have coloured pegs, you can always just use a wooden one and um, paint it. And so if you don't have any colored stickers, it can just be on a plain piece of paper, which would work just as well. Um, they are using bilateral coordination. If they can't use one, two hands to do this, hold it for them so they can use it. If you don't have a picture, you can just use an ice cream stick, which I painted some colors on, and ask them to match the different colors, um, purple on the purple. Um, still strengthening those little figures. I've also got some shapes here. You can ask them to match the color with the shape. What shape is it? How can it stand? Uh, different colors with different shapes. Blue on blue, you can make little men that can walk out of squares. Basically a whole lot of, of, of very good exercises for strengthening those pincer grips. All right, this is just a fun activity with marbles, a marble run. You can use a piece of cardboard, mine is six centimeters wide. Um, as long as you want, and then you um, put the pegs on alternating, um, you'll see, using some marbles, starting at the top, I think mine's a bit wonky, so I'll put something underneath it, and arrange it so that it can work, and let them run. The kids can have fun with this, you can do a whole lot of marbles all together, and just have fun. Rice motor, this is following on from my crocodile theme, all it is is I've created a river out of rope, you can use a mattress, you can use a long blanket, and whatever you want, as long as you want it and as wide as you want it. And basically, you are a crocodile sitting in the river, and your little tot has got to cross the river without you catching it. It's great for gross motor because they are using their bodies to run and dodge and move around. It's great for, for thinking skills because they are figuring out problem solving, reasoning, how can I, where can I and it's a great thrill for them. And then, of course, you give them a turn to be the crocodile and you've got to get across the river without them catching you. It's just great fun, enjoy. Water play this week is determining whether things will sink or float. For your little one, um, I gather a whole lot of items that you can put in the water. I've got a ball, um, with it you can have a marble, you can have spoons, I've got a plastic spoon and a metal spoon. I have got an elastic band, a straw, a cotton ball, a paper clip, a crayon, pencil crayon, and a wax crayon. Encourage them to find all sorts of things around the house as well. Before they put it in the water, discuss it with them. What do they think? Ask them, predict, ask them to predict what's going to happen. Let them count before they put it in. One, two, three. If they can count to five, count to five. If they can count backwards, three, two, one, and put it in. Aha, that'll float. What about this? What do you think is going to happen with this? Three, two, one. Sink, it must be heavier. What is about this one? Oh, that one is going to float. So discuss the results with them. Why do you think it is like that? What do they think that's going to happen? And then the second time around, because um, the kids will want to do it again, use the same utensils or the same objects. Um, this time, if you've got a crocodile, put the crocodile in the water. If not, they can use the imagination that there is a crocodile in the water. And then give them some tongs. And then you're going to place the items again in, or they can place them in, three, two, one, drop, or one, two, three, drop. And now they've got to try and use their memory about whether it sank or, or, or floated, because you say to them, you have to, they have to grab the object before it hits the bottom of the river, before the crocodile gets it. So they are now already thinking ahead, problem solving, critical thinking, reasoning, all of that's cognitive development and grab it out before the crocodile gets it and put it aside. Right, Play-Doh is excellent for developing those, those hand muscles and I'm always saying strengthening those hand muscles because it's um, important for writing skills one day. We develop hand dominance by strengthening the, the dominant hand. Okay, Play-Doh, we don't need effective, uh, a whole lot of tools to make an effective play. Basically, just using the hands is good enough. Starting with worms, to, uh, let them make worms. They can roll it in their hands using bilateral this way, turn it that way. On the, on the board, using two hands, you can make it thick, you can make it thin, you can make it long, short, you can break it in half, one, two. Those are a huge amount of skills just there that you've used. Also making balls. Make it take a little bit, 
put it on the hand and go round and round and round. We go round and round until it's a ball. Or you can put it on the table and then make it go round and round and round. You can make big balls, you can make little ones, you can make ones with your fingers. Um, excellent. And then if you have made a whole lot of little balls, encourage them to squish it like that with their fingers. Also great for developing strength, uh, strengthening muscles. And then we've got, um, if, you, if you take a whole bunch of Play-Doh in your hand, quite a bit, encourage them to squish it so it comes out of their, their fingers like that. That is great for strengthening. Then we've got, make a big ball with it, poke holes in it using both hands, flatten it, make a little handprint or fingerprints in it. Um, and then of course create, make a little animal. There's his head, where's his legs, um, all sorts of things. You can then squish it flat if you don't have a roller and you can make a face with smiley mouth. Basically use your imagination, let them use their imagination and do whatever they want to. If you're going to bring utensils into it, a roller is a good thing. Um, let them learn how to roll with both hands, pushing, pushing down. And um, plastic knife is excellent. Scissors is great. Um, of course, cookie cutters, excellent for pressing down and then pulling back up again, um, lifting them up. And a potato masher is a really fun thing for them to do, as they have to squish hard to push it and then get little worms coming out of it. This is a nice ne uh, mess free painting activity for the mummies that don't like mess in the house. I've taken um, red, blue and yellow paint again. Um, your, your paper is on a board, it can be a chopping board, it can be any board that you've got at home. And then I've got a piece of cling wrap underneath it, put that on there and then let the kids dot some paint all over the paper. Some yellow, it's got to be a little bit runny, the paint, and it's got to be quite close to each other and a little bit of red all over. They can do as much as they want, of course. And then we are going to cover it with a, with a cling wrap. We're going to cover it all the way. And then the kids are going to use their little fingers to mush the paint. And as it mushes, it makes different colors. The red and the, and the yellow make an orange and the blue and the green make, uh, the blue and the yellow make a green. And they can do as much as they want, squish it as far as they can go, all over. And then once we are done, the part that you're going to keep is the cling wrap part. So we are going to carefully take it off again. And cut that piece off. And on this side. And then this is the part that you are going to put on the piece of paper and put it on and the kids can rub it rub it rub it make a print take it off and there is your beautiful artwork sensory play this week in blueprint for this game is basically having your child's favorite toys um i happen to have a whole lot of blue because we, we've been doing blue and then a sensory bin full which i will give you a list at the end of the other video you are going to just hide it, everything in the sensory bin and you've got to ask your kids to go and rescue the animal or the toy out of there. Your utensils that you're going to give them, a spoon, a slatted uh, spatula, tongs, um, anything like that that, that, that they can use to manipulate. They are not allowed to use their fingers. Otherwise, um, the crocodile in there will bite them. But basically, it's, a, it's manipulating, it's using, it's picking up, it's tongs, it's yay, it's got free. And you can put as much as you want to. You can put big items, small items. And if the little ones are really not coping, that's fine. Let them, let them use their fingers. And of course, afterwards, it's just free play to, to have some fun.